Hi, I'm Matt Golovchinsky, the technical writer for What Digital Camera, and today we're going to be looking at the Olympus E620, one of the latest four thirds DSLRs. The E620 sits in between the existing E520 and E30 models. It has a lot in common with the latest E30, such as the 2.7 inch LCD screen, the art filters, and of course the 12.3 megapixel live mass sensor. As with many other Olympus models, the 620 has both image stabilisation and dust reduction. The image stabilisation is sensor based and it allows uh, four extra stops of usable shutter speeds over what would normally be possible. While the dust reduction, part of it is the supersonic wave filter which sits in front of the sensor and it shakes any dust which may have gone into the camera off um, so that it doesn't appear in your images. As is the case with the E450, which was announced slightly after the 620, um, the camera has a TruePic 3 Plus imaging processor. Olympus says that this provides images with natural colour and low noise. The processor is also responsible for operating the camera's live view system, which has three separate autofocusing modes, as well as you being able to manually focus. And it also allows the camera a uh, four frames per second burst rate for up to five raw images. As with the recent E30 model, you've also got a sensitivity range which now stretches from ISO 100 to 3200. That's um, a stop extra over the E520 and the E420. You've also got um, options for noise reduction for both um, long exposures and for high sensitivity images. You've got the noise filter which is given in three different options, low, standard and high. And you've got the noise reduction which is for long exposures, which you can either turn on, leave off or leave it to auto. Unfortunately, the camera doesn't have the E30's 11-point autofocusing system, but the 7-point autofocusing system that it does have is still quite an improvement over previous models such as the E520 and the 420. Five of the horizontal points are of the cross type, and you've got a point above and below each of these to make a total of seven. Impressively, the camera goes on to offer features that we'd usually see on professional bodies, such as the autofocus calibration, which allows you to calibrate focus for up to 20 individual lenses. This is similar to the system that we've seen in the E30, albeit slightly different. We also have wireless flash control, which again has been offered on Olympus models for some time, but we don't generally see it on uh, comparable models. It's usually something we see on professional bodies. There's also a range of bracketing options, which cover not just exposure and flash uh, exposure, but also sensitivity and white balance too. So you've got a lot of control in camera. As with the recent E30 and 450 models, we've also got a range of art filters on the camera. These allow you to uh, add some processing instantly to your pictures. You've got six to choose from. You've got pop art, soft focus, pan and light colour, light tone, grainy film and pinhole. And they're accessed by the art scene uh, option on the mode dial here. There's no way to remove the effect once you've actually taken an image with, with it on in the camera and unless you shoot a raw file alongside you also don't get a clean image if you want to add any further processing to it. As with previous Olympus models you've got two slots, you've got one for compact flash cards and one for XD cards as well. It's really good that you can also open the door just by sliding it open as on previous models you needed to open it via a small hinge which is quite uncomfortable. Um, but this is good if you've got any spare memory cards as it means you can use one as an overflow. As for the design of the 620, it's probably best described as a blend of the 420, the 520 and the E30. Obviously we've got the flip out LCD which is similar to the E30, but the form is very similar to the 420 and the 520. The button controls are very similar too, and the super control panel is also pretty much the same. The viewfinder has changed slightly from the 420 and the 520. It still offers a 95% coverage, but the magnification has increased from 0.92 to 0.96. Now, clearly this is a good thing, because it means that you can see the image a little bit bigger, but the exposure information is now at the bottom of the image rather than on the side. It makes the view a little bit taller, and it's actually slightly harder to see than on the 520. Okay, so if you have a look at the top plate, we've got the button for activating the flash over on this side here, joined with a button for uh, changing the drive modes, and pop the flash down. We've got the mode dial on the other side with all the basic exposure modes. You've got a few scene modes as well, and also 
the uh, arc filters option. Then you've got the exposure compensation and the command dial joined by the shutter release button at the front. You've also got a little lamp at the front underneath the SSWF which just indicates that the supersonic wave filter is in operation. Okay, so if we look at the back for a minute, we can see that the main changes are with the menu and the info button from the 520, where these were down the side here. We can also see that the hinge uh, for the LCD screen has displaced all the buttons elsewhere around the body. We've got the image stabilization button here, live view and play buttons, as well as the standard menu pad for controlling things such as white balance and metering. You can change the autofocus points by the button here, while the function button you can assign a particular function such as the one touch white balance which allows you to, to quickly access that. Okay, so the live view is activated by the button on the rear, um, which you can see it gives you all the exposure information such as your aperture, your shutter speed. You've got a live histogram as well, uh, so you can correctly judge your exposure. Um, pressing the info button just alternates between the different displays you've got. So you've got your standard display, you've got grid lines which is obviously useful if you want to be shooting uh, straight horizons and that kind of thing. Uh, you can see you've got your white balance settings, your sensitivity, your aspect ratios and that kind of thing. Um, so it does give you a lot of options if you are going to be using the live view. One of the main improvements of the 620 over previous models is the focusing system and it really is quite nice to use. The fact that it's got more points and the fact that five of them are cross type means that it's a lot more sensitive to picking up uh, accurate focusing. Um, it is a little bit slow in comparison with uh, similar models um, but if you use an SWD lens such as the 12 to 60 you do see a generally uh, fast, uh, reasonably fast performance similar to the E30 for example. In terms of exposure, the camera is calibrated to produce an almost perfect mid-tone uh, with no bias towards any kind of shadow or highlights. The dynamic range is also quite impressive, um, exceeding around 10 stops, which is quite reasonable for such a camera. And it's also quite welcome to see the highlight and shadow spot metering modes, which have been on Olympus cameras for a number of years now, and they make it really easy to meter uh, in predominantly dark or light conditions. Colour and tone is generally quite nice too. Uh, the results aren't too vibrant, but they're not too subtle either. Uh, they strike a nice balance between the two. The white balance is a little bit warm though, um, whether you're shooting indoors or outside in daylight. And together with a slight underexposure when you're shooting images of a lot of skies, for instance, it can lead to slightly darker and murky images. But fortunately, you can use the shadow adjustment technology to lift detail out from shadowy areas and just improve the tonality of the image. The JPEG quality from the E620 is also quite impressive, with JPEG showing good sharpness and detail in comparison to the RAW files. The image stabilisation system is also quite effective, and it generally allows around two to three stops of usable shutter speeds than would be usually possible. You can at times achieve uh, slightly more, as Olympus say, um, but I wouldn't count on it for every shot. In terms of noise, the camera is slightly noisier than the 520, which isn't too surprising given that the sensor is slightly more populated. Um, but you can at least go an extra stop now to ISO 3200 if you need to, and there are a range of noise reduction options in camera uh, if you want to smooth out the noise. The software that comes with the camera is the Olympus Studio and the trial of the Master Suite. The Studio allows you some uh, basic raw processing options, uh, but the master suite is more comprehensive, um, allowing you sort of full control over raw processing. It's a bit of a shame that it's only a 30-day trial though, meaning that you need to buy the full copy, but you can use third-party programs such as Photoshop. With the art filters and the flip-out LCD screen, clearly the point of the 620 is to have fun, and you can have a lot of fun with the camera. It's really nice to use, and it's welcome to see that Olympus has improved things such as the autofocusing from previous models. The only downsides really are the fact that the noise levels are slightly worse than the 520 and the viewfinder some may find is a step backwards from the 520 and at around £700 too it's a little bit pricey for what it offers considering that it's only really a continuation of the 420 and the 520. When it comes down in price a little though I can see this camera really appealing to four thirds enthusiasts and it should make quite a splash in that market. We give the camera 85%.